Hi, I'm Paul Atchley, Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of Kansas, and I'm presenting my research at the 23rd Annual Convention of the Association for Psychological Science. In our laboratory, what we're interested in is traffic safety. We're a human factors laboratory. One of the things that we've been concentrating on in recent years is the issue of distracted driving. Distracted driving is a big issue, and it's becoming bigger every year. We have young adults who, believe it or not, text and drive at alarmingly high rates. In fact, some of our latest research shows that about 97% of young drivers text and drive. It's an extremely dangerous behavior. It's about six times as bad as driving drunk. They know that it's risky. They know that they shouldn't be engaging in it, and yet they do it anyway. One of the questions we have is, if we're going to develop public safety campaigns to try to end this behavior, how can we do that? What motivates the behavior? So that we've been studying recently is, what is the cause of texting and driving? Is it an addictive behavior? Knowing if something's addictive is, is a kind of a tough question. So we actually co-opted a, a method from economic psychology to try to answer that question. And in this study, what we did was we asked people to delay sending a text message and basically asked them how much they'd be willing to pay to do that. Imagine that you get a text message after you've been away for a week from your significant other that says, text me when you can. And then some psychologist comes along to you and says, hold on a second, I'm going to give you $100 if you're willing to wait for an hour to send that text message. Or if you really want to send it right now, I'll give you a lesser amount of money. How much money do you think it would cost you to be able to send that text message right away? So by making these comparisons in delayed discounting, we can assess whether or not someone is truly addicted to text messaging. Because we can compare it to other behaviors, such as alcoholism, gambling, addiction, opioids, etc. Just to give you a quick feel for what we actually found, if you look at the degree of delayed discounting expressed in the typical metric K, and you compare the K values for someone who's delaying sending a text versus the K values for someone who's delaying, for example, having a drink if they're an alcoholic, what we find is that the K values for someone sending a text are equivalent to the K values for someone who's, equivalent, who, who's addicted to alcohol, who is addicted to smoking or addicted to gambling. That's interesting, but k-values don't always express completely what's going on, so I'll express it another way. Another way to think about it is loss of value. So for example, if I tell you, you're going to have to you know, hold off, or you can send it now, how much are you willing to give me to actually send a text now? If you imagine getting a text from your significant other, and I tell you that you have to wait some period of time, you're willing to essentially give me $25 to wait no more than about six minutes to send that text. If I ask you to wait approximately six hours to send that text, you will basically give me $50 out of $100, 50% of the money I was going to give you to send the text right now. So what we think this means is that young adults are essentially addicted to text messaging. And if we're going to design campaigns to end this behavior in dangerous situations such as driving, we need to really think about the level of motivation of that behavior. Thanks for listening.